Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check a bunch of new 4-in-1 ESCs and flight controllers from HackerC. In this video, I'm going to show you the new products and go over their features and specs, and on a separate video, or maybe videos, I'm going to feature at least one of these products where I'm going to build and fly a new quadcopter. First, let's start with the HK3260 and the HK8B45 full-sized 4-in-1 ESCs. The HK3260 is a BLL3240 in 1 ESC with a current rating of 60 amperes, and the HK8B45 is a BLLES4 in 1 ESC with a current rating of 45 amperes. Both 4 in 1 ESCs feature a current sensor and support up to 6S batteries, and on both, in addition to the 8 pins JST connector, you can find matching soldering pads on the bottom of the board. In addition, both 4 in 1 ESCs feature 30.5 by 30.5 mm mounting holes. And the feature that makes the HK8B45 quite unique is also the added 20 by 20 mm mounting holes, which will enable you to mount a 20 by 20 mm flat controller on top of this 4-in-1 ESC. As for the weight and dimensions, the weight of the HK3260 is 14.7 grams, and its outer dimensions are 45 by 42.2 by 4 mm. The HK8B45 is slightly lighter and weighs 13.5 grams and its outer dimensions are 43.6 by 43.7 by 4 mm. In terms of packaging, with both products you can find a high quality XT60 battery connector, an 8 pins JST harness for connecting the 4-in-1 ESC and the flight controller, two 7 cm long 12 gauge battery leads, a 35 volts 470 microfarad capacitor, and M4 to M3 rubber grommets. In addition, for the HK8B45 4-in-1 ESC, you're also getting M3 to M2 rubber grommets for the 20 by 20 mm mounting holes. Moving on to the 3240A, a BLL 32 40 ampere 20 by 20 mm 4 in 1 ESC. It supports up to 6S batteries and features an onboard current sensor. The pads for the motors are only found on the top side of the board. It features 3 mm 20 by 20 mm mounting holes, and there are no extra soldering pads in addition to the 8 pins JST connector. In addition, the weight of the board is 6.2 grams, and its outer dimensions are 31 by 29.4 by 3.8 millimeters. In terms of packaging, inside the box, along with the 4-in-1 ESC, you are getting 4 M3 to M2 rubber grommets, an 8-pin JST harness for connecting the 4-in-1 ESC and the flight controller, an XT30 battery connector, which is pre-soldered to 18-gauge battery leads, and a 35 volts 270 microfarad capacitor. Now after checking out the 4-in-1 ESCs, let's check out the new line of flight controllers, which is based on two full-sized and two mini-sized F4 and F7 flight controllers. First of all, all the flight controllers are equipped with the USB Type-C connector, and in addition to a 5V BEC, they also feature a 9V BEC, which is great for DJI builds. Both full-sized flight controllers are equipped with a JST connector that will enable you to quickly connect the flight controller to a DJI Air unit. And the main differences between these two flight controllers are that one is equipped with an F7 processor and two gyros, so using Betaflight you can switch between an MPU6000 and a 2602 gyro chip, and the second one is equipped with an F4 processor and a single MPU6000 gyro chip. As for the 20x20mm flight controllers, one features an F7 processor and soldering pads in addition to an 8 pins JST connector for connecting the flight controller with the 4 in 1 ESC. And the second one features an F4 processor and JST connectors for connecting your accessories, including a dedicated connector for connecting a DJI Air unit. Finally, in terms of packaging, all the flight controllers come with either M4 to M3 or M3 to M2 rubber grommets, a harness for connecting the flight controllers with a 4 in 1 ESC, and a connector for a DJI Air unit. At this point, I would like to point out that the labeling on the 4-in-1 ESC JST connector of the F4 flight controller is reversed, at least on the version that I've got, and this is the correct one. In addition, even though all the flight controllers and 4-in-1 ESCs that I just showed you are equipped with the same type of 4-in-1 ESC JST connector, you should always double-check the connectors before connecting the 4-in-1 ESC and flight controller. The last product that I'm going to show you in this video, which by the way I'm certain to feature in the build and flight video, is the F4120, an all-in-one F4 flight controller with an integrated 35 ampere BLLES 4-in-1 ESC. This product is very similar to the AGLRC Zeus 35, which I've previously reviewed. However, it comes with a lower price tag, features bigger pads for the motors, features an onboard barometer, in addition to full UART ports, 
It features a dedicated TX6 pad using soft serial, and most important, in addition to a 5V BEC, it also features a 10V BEC, which is perfect for connecting the all-in-one flight controller to a DJI Air unit, because the Air unit supports up to 4S batteries, and this all-in-one flight controller supports up to 6S batteries. Here you can see the layout of the flight controller. So on both right and left sides, you can find 10V and 5V pads for powering up your video transmitter or camera. On the right side, you can find two full UART ports, a dedicated SBUS pad, and even though it's not marked, over here you can find a TX6 pad, which is using soft serial, so I recommend to use it for setting up your video transmitter. As for packaging, inside the box, along with the all-in-one flight controller, you can find an XT30 battery connector, which is pre-soldered to 18 gauge battery leads, a 35 volt 270 microfarad capacitor, and four M3 to M2 rubber grommets for soft mounting the flight controller. The dimensions of the F4120 are very similar to the Zeus 35, and its outer dimensions are 38.4 by 29.2 by 4 mm. In addition, the weight of the Hacker C F4120, including the rubber grommets, is 9.1 grams, so it's 1.5 grams lighter than the AGLRC Zeus 35. So overall, priced at $40, this is a very interesting budget-friendly all-in-one flight controller that was heavily inspired by the Zeus 35 with some improved features, so I'm looking forward to see how it's going to perform. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video, and of course, if you have any questions about any of the products that I showed you in this video, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye.